All right, so good day class. So today we're going to continue our lesson on project scheduling. So just from still from the book that I'm working on on integrated construction project management. Let's head to page 28. So let's look into project scheduling. So so scheduling is a key part of the planning process. Scheduling is often the most familiar component for project managers, but the project schedule should not be confused with a project plan. A project schedule is a key component of a project plan, but only one component. So a project plan consists of much more information than just scheduling information. An approved work breakdown structure is required to activity planning and scheduling. So project scheduling is the process of determining when activities will take place depending upon defined durations and dependent activities. So project scheduling is a critical task in planning as it dictates the time frames for project completion. So the budget, the budgets, cost of resource requirements, and the sequence of tasks to be completed. So schedule constraints exist in most projects. Constraints relate to when activities should start and end, they rarely can all start at once as some are dependent on other activities and resource might not be available. So the schedule therefore outlines when each activity should start or end based on duration, predecessors, external predecessor relationships, resource availability, target dates, or other time constraints. So I think last, what's the gist of this is that, for example, in construction, there are stages that cannot happen uh, without uh, the prior activity being completed. Then there's also activities that could go parallel or hand, hand in hand. So that's why class, um, in the previous uh uh, lessons, we talked about the work breakdown structure because if you have a strong or valid work breakdown structure, then project scheduling could be done much easier. Okay, so let's look into some common scheduling terms. So some common uh, scheduling terms are first is activity. So it means a specific task required uh, requiring completion for the project uh, for example in a field of architecture or construction we have painting works uh, ceiling works concrete works so that's an activity so an event it's an, an identifiable endpoint as a result of completing one or more activities so events use no resources then we have a network so a network is the logical sequence an arrangement of all activities and events defining precedent relationships. Networks are usually drawn left to right and arrows are used to indicate the direction or flow of activities. Before an event can be realized, each preceding activities must be completed. In a path, these are a series of connected activities between any two events in a network. Then you have what you call a critical path, which are activities, events, or paths that will delay the overall project if they are delayed or not completed. So project scheduling can be a complex and iterative task. Other dependencies and other constraints need to be adjusted throughout the project. So scheduling in the planning phase typically involves assigning resource, project tasks so when you say resources it could either mean human or material resources then balancing completion dates with resources to complete all tasks within the available time identifying dependencies within tasks that they are scheduled in the correct sequence identifying realistic start and end points to accommodate the number of delays 
work for each given task. Then you have the critical path analysis to identify those tasks which are critical to the success and timely completion of the project. So now class that we are already in the electronic age or yeah, in this age of the internet, what's really important is we know we have a, a, a work breakdown schedule that is quite valid. Uh, something uh, that's really accurate. Something that describes our project um, precisely. So if you have a good break, work breakdown structure, then you have an idea of the number of days it could be completed. And you have a project management software. All you have to do is input that so that you could directly get the critical path. Okay, or the activities that need to be completed without delay okay, in the project. So, the WBS or the work breakdown structure is really the foundation for you to be able to have a clearer picture on how you're going to run the project. So, prior to scheduling activities, Plan activities identified in the WBS must be defined. Work packages from the WBS need to be considered to confirm what activities or outputs are required to consider the activity complete. So, this information will be used to sequence and schedule the activities and enable project managers to analyze the flow toward project completion. Some activities may be standalone and can be accomplished at any time throughout the project while others depend on input from another activity or are constrained by time or resources. So, any requirement that restricts the start or end time of an activity is called a dependency. For example, when a building a house, you cannot build the walls until the foundations have been completed. A delay in predecessor activity impacts all those following it. These activities sit, so if these activities sit on the critical path defined with the project management book of knowledge as a sequence of activities that represents the longest path through a project which determines the shortest possible duration, so the overall project will be delayed. So, for scheduling tools, you could use a software. It would really depend on what software you're going to use. So, software programs such as Microsoft Project are useful in scheduling as dependencies can be complex and difficult to update manually. Okay, so the software help facility help facilitate uh, um, uh, help facilitate to provide good insight into the software features for creating and displaying task lists, Gantt charts, critical paths, and resources. So knowledge of the features of the software is important to optimize the project schedule. When creating a schedule using a software program, the key tasks are setting up the project information, such as the calendar, the start date, the end date, etc. Entering the deliverables and activities. So like what I've said earlier, you must have a good WBS or work breakdown structure. You enter the estimates. So what are your estimated costs for each activities? You enter the predecessors, you enter the resource definitions, the calendar, the working time, etc. Then you assign resources to activities. Then you analyze the critical path. Make adjustment based on risk responses, compress the schedule, and then baseline the schedule. So this is quite a tedious task if you're going to perform these things manually. So that's why I urge you, class, since we do not have a laboratory aspect for project management right now, that, that you learn um, some project management softwares like Microsoft Project. I think you could see a lot of tutorials already. And you could also visit their site to maybe uh, download a trial version for it so that you'll be acquainted on Microsoft Project. Okay, but aside from Microsoft Project, there are also other softwares as well available in the market which are much more complex and um, provides a better insight on your undertaking. Then you have 
And for the scheduling tools, you have the network diagrams. So network diagrams are a key tool in project planning as they provide a visual aid to show project activities and their interrelationships. At their simplest level, network diagrams can be a Gantt chart showing task durations or milestones, use more sophisticated techniques of Program Evaluation Review Technique or PERT and the Critical Path Method, CPM. Okay. So a PERT diagram is shown in Figure 1. So this is Figure 1. This is a PERT diagram. So if this is the start, so these are the different activities. So these are the different uh, durations also. So you need um, activity B, uh, complete activity C, you need to complete G and B. So that's the meaning of it. Okay. So network diagrams can be activity on arrow or AOA or activity on node AON. Then AON diagrams are generally easier to create and interpret and more commonly used in practice. So, PERT was originally used to determine the time elements of project using probability estimates. So, CPM uses deterministic activity estimates and was designed to control time and cost trade-offs. Both techniques use critical path analysis and crashing can be used on both. PERT and CPM are both time-oriented methods used to determine the time schedules for a project the difference between them centers on their time estimates. CPM assumes that the time estimates for different activities are deterministic, while in part they are regarded as prob probabilistic. Okay, so critical path analysis determines the longest path for the completion of a project activity and determine the shortest duration. Critical path analysis also helps to identify the flexibility in the project schedule. After critical path activities are identified, you can determine the flexibility on non-critical activities by calculating the difference from the late start date and early start date for each non-critical activity. The difference is called float or slack time. So essentially, this is the time in which an activity can tolerate a delay without affecting the project finish date. Okay, so cook. To calculate the float time, four parameters must be determined for each activity. You have the ES or the area start time that an activity can begin if all preceding activities are completed in the shortest possible time. And you have the EF or the earliest finish time plus the time needed to complete the activity. And you have the LF or the latest time for task initiation that will not delay the project. We have the LS or the latest time that the activity can be completed without delaying the project. So the critical path is the path through the project network diagram where none of the activities have slack time. And AS is equal to LF and EF is equal to LF for all activities on the path. So to give an example in practice, consider the following example in a decoration project. So for example, surface preparation prior to painting. You have two days to complete. You have paint skirting boards, two days to complete. Paint ceilings, three days. First coat of paint to walls, four days to complete. Second coat of paint to walls, two days to complete. Then clean up, two days. So in this example, surface preparation is a predecessor to all activities. Activities two to four are independent. Activity 4 is a predecessor of Activity 5. Activity 6 can only start after 2 to 5 are completed. So the network diagram for the paintwork has three paths in the following durations. So you have path 1, Activity 1, 2 days, plus Activity 2, uh, 2 days, plus Activity 6, 2 days, that's 6 days. Then a path 2, Activity 1, 2 days. Activity 3, 3 days. Activity 6, 2 days, that's 7 days. Then path 3, uh, activity 1, 2 days. Activity 4, 4 days. Activity 5, 2 days. And activity 6, 2 days, which equals to 10 days. So path 3 
10 days is the longest and is the critical path to complete the project. To illustrate how to calculate the float, consider path 1. So for activity 1, day 1 is the ES as this is the first activity. EF is day 2 as it takes 2 days to complete. For this, the LS is equal to EF and LF is equal to EF because it is the predecessor to all activities. For activity 2, ES is day 2 as it can be started straight after activity 1 and EF is day 4 as it takes 2 days to complete. Based on the finish date determined by the critical date which is day 10, LF for this activity is day 8 as it needs to be completed before activity 6 and start on day 9 and LS is day 7. So for Activity 6 ES is day 9 as can only start after activity 5 is complete, which ends on day 8. And the EF is day 10 as it takes 2 days to complete. For this activity, LS is equal to EF and LF is equal to EF because it is the successor to all other activities. So the float time for the first and last activities will be 0. The float time for the second activity will be LS day 7 and minus ES day 3 which is equal to 4 days. This means you have the flexibility to start us to delay the start of the second activity or by 4 days without affecting the overall project completion date. So critical path can change through a project perhaps due to delays encountered or estimation errors of activity times. Therefore new critical paths can emerge. After determining the critical path, you can change the assumptions related to resource availability and draw another network diagram. The critical path that takes resource availability into account is called the critical chain. The critical chain technique is useful as it considers resource dependencies. Uh, for example, you may need the same person, team to deliver separate activities or have other resource limitations which although not technically dependent, are resource dependent. So, in the above painting example, the two-day duration of activity 2 may have been made assuming five painters are available to complete the work. If only one painter is actually available, then activity 2 may increase to 10 days. Therefore, the total duration of path 1 changes to 14 days. That's 2 plus 10 plus 2. Then, this then becomes the new critical path. The differences between the durations in the two scenarios are called duration buffers. So critical chain analysis is about managing these duration buffers to minimize impact on the overall project. Resources can often be moved from one activity to another to meet important project delivery dates. This process is called resource leveling. Resource leveling leads to changes in the initial critical path. So, crashing is a compression technique used applied to shorten the scheduled completion time of a project to meet a deadline. So, project duration can be reduced by assigning more resource to activities, for example, through overtime or adi assigning additional staff, material, or equipment. So, this can reduce the time but adds additional cost, hence the trade-off decision. So, crash time is the amount of time an activity is reduced by and crash cost is the cost of reducing the activity. So, the goal of crashing is to reduce project duration at the minimum cost. So, other ways to compress uh, schedule include eliminating, eliminating parts of the project, adding more resources, parallelization of activities. So, some activities could go parallel, could go hand in hand together. Shortening early activities, shortening longest activities, shortening easiest activities, shorting activities that are least costly to speed up, shortening activities where you have multiple resources available, or increasing the number of work hours per day. So the primary planning objectives are to deliver the agreed project in the best time at the least cost and the least risk. Secondly, secondary planning objectives include studying alternatives, optimizing the schedule, using resources effectively, refining the estimating process, ease of project control, 
and ease of time or cost revisions. Limitations of planning objectives include complete date pressures, cash flow restrictions, limited resources, and management approvals. Okay, so let's stop at this. Uh, in 2005, the PMI, the Project Management Institute, renamed PERT as ADM or Arrow Diagram Method and CPM as PDM or Precedence Diagram Method in the Project Management Body of Knowledge. So estimating a course after the work has been estimated and after the resources needed have been considered and is a cornerstone activity for project planning. Estimating is difficult to practice because there is often not a clear or complete understanding by the estimator of the work to be performed and the relationship between the work estimate and the resource completing the work is not defined or communicated. Uncertainty is naturally involved in estimating and this can create risk within a project, particularly if the project fails to provide a contingency buffer. Okay, so let's end our uh, lecture on, uh, on est uh, in, uh, estimating. Because uh, when I think you have a separate subject for this, uh, and maybe in building technology five. Uh, so, so this is our lecture for the week class. Um, if you have any further questions or clarifications, you can send a message to me anytime. Then we'll also have um, a synchronous, uh, no, synchronous lectures as well, so that we could clarify some of the terms that I have been stating here, especially if they have been uh, quite ambiguous or you need to clarify something. Then I uh, think next week, we're going to discuss how to compute uh, a uh, a network diagram. So let's learn about the part CPM method. Okay. So although class, I really encourage you to use softwares to make it, uh, it easier so that you could focus on the important task in the project, okay, which is making uh, decisions. Okay. So what's really important for us architects is for you to have a project like cycle perspective. So meaning that when you view a project, you do not view it as a sequence of activities, but the entire project as a whole. Okay, so see you next meeting class.